This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I want to show you one of the most interesting performance pitfalls that I can basically guarantee that like 90% of you will actually suffer from right now in your code if you're using enums. And it's very interesting for multiple reasons and one of them is why is this not better? It could be, why is it not? So at the end of the video I'm gonna make a call to action for someone that might want to tackle an interesting project and actually solve this. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe and ring the notification bell to get alerted when I upload a new video. So let's see what the pitfall is. And it's very, very interesting actually, because I know you have code that looks like this. So we have an enumeration here. We call it human states. Idle, working, sleeping, eating, dead. There is no having fun in my human states here. And what you can do with an enum is you can use the integer value that it basically maps to because an enumeration is just... Uh, a number with a fancy name, if you think about it. And then you can use it to represent a number with something that makes more sense uh, in your domain or your application. And you can print its string value, its text value, in multiple ways. You can do the normal to string uh, without any uh, value, and the value in the text here is the formatting you want. So this means flags, this means um, number, and this means a hexadecimal and then g is the same thing as having nothing which is give me the text i'm not going to explain what flags are that's a story for a different video uh, but if i run this you see that you get working which is the text value of the enum then you have the flags let's not talk about this working then one for the integer and then one for the hex and i can guarantee that you have code that does this it takes an enum maybe it's, you know, allocated as a variable here. So you have this and then you do idle dot to string to get the text value and then you use it somewhere. It makes sense. Many times in your code base, you'd want to do something like that. Now, let's write a benchmark for that to string. I'm going to create a simple class here called Benji and I'm going to add a public uh, string uh, to string. Well, actually native to string because toString is a method that exists in a class. Uh, and then I'm going to say return human states dot dead dot toString. So I'm going to just use that and benchmark this. I'm going to use the benchmark attribute and I have already imported in the project, the benchmark.net project. If you don't know what that is or how it works, please check that video that I have already in the matter to get more details. It's a tool that allows you to do benchmarking, mainly micro benchmarking. And I'm going to also add a memory diagnoser here to allow me to see how much memory this benchmark allocates because that's important. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to say benchmark runner dot run and I'm going to point to the benchmark class. That's it. And then I'm going to switch that to release to make sure it produces the most optimal code for this benchmark. And then I'm going to execute this and I'm going to let it run and see how fast we can get the two string value of an enum. And this is basically dead as text. So results are back and let's see what we have. We have 20 nanoseconds, very, very fast, but we also have a 24 byte allocation here. Not so good. We have some garbage collection pressure. We ideally wouldn't want to have that. So, you know, it is what it is to string, but then I have an idea. How can I actually optimize this? How can I make it faster? Because I feel like something is off here, especially that memory allocation. Like, I have a feeling it shouldn't be there, considering all this information is there compile time. But I'm going to tell you how after I tell you about the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creatives where millions of people like you and me come together to take the learning experience to the next level. As someone who has solely focused on sharpening their backend software engineering skills over the years, I feel that my front-end skills and anything related to web design is holding me back from creating my own full-stack projects. Skillshare has thousands of classes on web development, web design, and UX for all skill levels, so you can rest assured that you will definitely find something to learn from. I personally had an interest in learning more about user experience and taking Marik Makowski's intro to UX Fundamentals of Usability was an eye-opening experience for something I used to take for granted. By joining Skillshare, you gain access to thousands of ad-free classes curated specifically for learning with new premium classes launching all the time. 
The first 1000 people to use the link in the description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. So take the next step in your creative journey and click that link in the description for your free trial. So as you were watching this ad, I came in and I added a method here called fast to string. And I'm not gonna show you what it is yet. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another benchmark and I'm gonna call it fast to string here. And I'm going to call that method and execute it and then compare that with the native to string and see what we get. So same thing, I just added this secret method and I'm going to execute the benchmark. So let's see what we get. So results are back and let's see what we have. Now it runs in less than a nanosecond, it runs in 0.8 nanoseconds and it allocates no memory, but it still returns the same value. I can prove it by going here, commenting this out um, and doing something like this. So I'm going to instantiate the class, change this to debug, and I'm going to say uh, console.writeline uh, benchy.the fast string and also the native to string. And if I run this, you see that they both return the same value. So how did I do that? Well, it's actually stupid simple. You basically create a switch. And now you're thinking, well, that's cheating. Well, no, it's not because you have the value in compile time. Why would you make a constant out of it to save on that memory allocation and make sure it's way, way faster? Do string for most of the use cases that you have is doing fundamentally way, 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 way more stuff than it should be. All you want is the text value. So you can just automatically generate this value. And I'm actually gonna talk about this automatically generate thing because I think it's a great opportunity for a very nice project if you have the time to do it. Now, am I saying that you should go back to every enum you have that you're doing a two string on and create something like this? Yes and no. If you don't care about that type of performance, like saving the memory and being, I don't know, 20 times faster, then no. But if you have that in a critical path, maybe many times, then why not just save that memory that is going to get garbage collected for no reason, basically. This is all compile time information. Like, even if you changed it and you didn't use a uh, name of to this, which I don't advise, I advise towards using that because it's uh, compile time safe, you would still turn it in a constant and you wouldn't have to worry about the location. You saw what the memory looked like. It was zero. Now, what I'm curious about is why this is happening. So I'm going to stick a breakpoint here. I'm going to F12 in this code that I don't own. Add a breakpoint in the internal format and maybe actually add a breakpoint on this enum info, get enum info. And in order to achieve this type of debugging, I have to say external debug uh, on. So in writer, I'm going to uh, select that. I'm going to enable uh, external source debug. So debug into code I don't own. And if I debug this, I should be able to hit this breakpoint. Yep, we have. So let's step into that. Let's step into that. And now we have the info, so we get info, and then we don't have any flags attribute, so it goes in here, it steps in that, and then it's gonna do a binary search into all the values to get an index, in our case it's four, and then it's going to do a lookup on the names that it has in this array. So we can save all that unnecessary stuff by just simply having it on compile time with a simple switch. Now, the interesting thing about the binary search is that each average performance on, on this array is an O log N. And that means the more values your enum has, the slower it will potentially become. The best case scenario is O1, but average, I think, is O log N. So you really don't want to be using it. There is no real reason why you would use it if you can do it compile time. Now, the call to action I was talking about is that this piece of code is extremely easy to auto-generate. So if one of you wants to dip their toes into source generators, to me, this is the perfect use case. It's a very simple generator, source generator to use. It will really, really make a difference. You can make it very flexible to support the other types as well, where you have hex, flags, and uh, integers. And I know I would use it. Anyway, that's all there is to it. ToString is not efficient. If you can have a compile time version of it, please do. It will really, really, really make a difference if you have something in a hot path. Obviously, performance is contextual. You most likely don't need to do this, but if you're looking to save some memory and some time, then here's a freebie. That's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreon for making this video possible. 
If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.